Leon Jacob, a medical resident from the affluent Houston neighborhood of River Oaks, is charged with two counts of solicitation of capital murder. His girlfriend, Valerie McDaniel, a prominent veterinarian, also faces the same charges. In the state of Texas, solicitation of capital murder is a felony that carries a life sentence even if nobody dies. Investigators allege Leon wanted his ex-girlfriend, Megan Varicus, murdered. So he hires a hitman named Motaz Aza. They also claim he convinced his current girlfriend, Valerie, to have her ex-husband, Marion Mac McDaniel, killed. Except Motaz is more con man than hitman and disappears with Leon's money. So then Leon turns to bail bondsman Michael Kubosh to try to find Motaz. Now, Kubosh had posted bail for both men in the past. But suspecting foul play, the bail bondsman contacts Houston PD, and they assign Sergeant Javier Duran to investigate the case as an undercover agent. I lived in the Wyndham Grand in the beginning of 2014, and I met Megan there. She was an assistant manager at a hotel where he stayed. And ultimately, she picked up her life and moved to be with Leon in Houston. We had this fight, but prior to the fight, I had discovered that she had been taking money out of our joint checking account. And it was, you know, quite upsetting that I had discovered that. Leon actually assaulted her. And so she made the decision to contact the Houston Police Department. She filed a report. In addition to the assault charges, in February, Leon is arrested and charged with stalking Megan at her workplace. Because of his conduct immediately after the assault charge leading to the stalking charge, she applied for that protective order and received it. Those assault charges were felony charges, and felony charges would mean that Leon could not get his medical degree. That was what he wanted in life. That was, to him, survival. It just seemed like everything happened very fast. It really snowballed. Leon Jacob was going through a bad breakup with Megan, and she had filed charges on him, and a week later, he ends up moving in with Valerie. And those felony charges also complicate matters for Valerie, who was having child custody issues with her ex-husband, Mac. Mac's concerns about Leon are not unfounded. Leon has a history of domestic violence and stalking. His first wife, Annie Morrison, who he shares two children with, also has a protective order against him. Mac knows that the defendant is now living with his ex-wife. Mac also knows that the defendant is charged with assaulting a family member and stalking. As you would imagine, he tells Valerie, my daughter is not going to be around this guy. Leon Jacob and Valerie McDaniel wanted to start a life together, but there were two things standing in their way. Leon's ex, Megan, and Valerie's ex, Mac. The defense claims Leon hired Motaz, a self-described private investigator who went by the alias Zach, not to kill Megan, but to simply convince her to drop the charges against him and move back to Pittsburgh. Motaz never even finds Megan, and just runs off with Leon's money, which is why Leon turns to the bail bondsman, Michael Kubosh, who he just used to post bond for the stalking charges. Leon Jacob said, I've paid him a lot of money to take care of this matter. I knew something was really wrong, and I had to call the chief of police. The Houston Police Department assigns Sergeant Javier Duran to the case, and within a week, he locates Motaz. I met Motaz for the first time at a bank parking lot. During that meeting, Motaz told me that Leon Jacob had approached him and offered him money, and in fact, paid him cold hard cash to kill his ex-girlfriend. Leon Jacob needs to tell me that he wants somebody killed, and I also need him to Pay me. So Sergeant Duran sets up a sting operation. He recruits Motaz as an informant and has him contact Leon to offer him an introduction to a new hitman, one better suited to take care of his problem. The new hitman is Sergeant Duran, posing as a former Navy SEAL mercenary. The entire operation would only take four days and would be carried out through a series of recorded meetings and phone calls. Well, I'm going to set up a meeting with you tomorrow so we can finish this, OK? OK. And I'm going to bring with me the Navy SEAL guy so we can get this done. Okay, we're taking care of both problems. Yeah, she was. It's just, it's your decision. 
The conversation then shifts to what Valerie wants done to her ex-husband. Let's say if something were to happen to him, it could be like a car wreck. It could be a car wreck. It could be a robbery gone somewhere. You want to do that? It's not going back. It's okay. This will take my I believe Leon Jacob was definitely the mastermind behind Valerie's request to have Matt killed. And I was going to be paid $10,000 from Leon Jacob and Valerie McDaniel for Matt McDaniel's murder. With the help of state investigators and the victims themselves, the second phase of the sting operation begins, staging the death of Mac and the kidnapping of Megan. In an empty warehouse, they photograph Megan gagged and bound and Mac covered in pig's blood with a fake bullet wound to his head. Later, Sergeant Duran meets Leon and Valerie at her condo to notify them of Mac's death and collect the $10,000. I'm going to come out just right and tell you guys. The male subject, so I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, he's, he's gone. He's done. All right. You want to hear more? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Leon Jacob paid me $1,800 in cash for Mac McDaniel's murder with the promise of paying the rest of the money to complete the murder of Megan. After leaving Leon and Valerie's condo, I called Leon Jacob and told him that we had Megan and that she was refusing to cooperate with our demands for her to leave the state of Texas. Did you try to talk to her at all about just leaving? Man, I, I tried as much as I could. So your actress up and goes, or you're going to do what you do. Would you like me to try that again? Yeah, I want you to call me before you do anything. Hey, bud. There's no reason we're her. She doesn't care about leaving. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. She's uh, she's dead. Nothing's gonna come back. Absolutely nothing. I'm taking care of everything as we speak right now. After telling Leon that Megan had to be murdered, we came up with the decision to do a mock death notification. I'm afraid we have some bad news. Your ex-husband's been found. It looks like it. Uh... Turns out to be a fatality. Uh, is your boyfriend here with you? You might want to let him know. I think you're going to need some help. Your ex husband's been found tonight. So oh my God. This might have been a robbery going on. Holy to if anybody knows anything. Or no, we. I'll let me help you. Are you okay, baby? We've been here all night. After capturing their reactions on body worn camera, the officers revealed that they were, in fact, under arrest for solicitation of capital murder. Right now, we're going to read you your rights. Me? Because both of you are being arrested for oh. solicitation of capital murder. Put your palms together. They worked really hard to get interviews and tapes and photos and all sorts of other evidence. This is unbelievable. Yes. Because they knew that just the he said, she said case wasn't going to hold up in front of a jury. This murder for hire case has taken an unexpected and tragic turn. Valerie McDaniel was found dead at the Willow Wicks condominiums. On the day that Valerie committed suicide, she was actually supposed to appear in court so that she could fight an order of custody of their young daughter. Without his words on the witness stand, the only words that the jury would hear from him are the words where he was asking the undercover police officer to get rid of these individuals. And the tapes themselves, you always have the undercover basically always trying to escalate Leon, but Leon never actually officially says on tape, I want her dead. Do you want me to take care of her myself? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Why are you questioning him? Because I don't want it to happen. He never said the magic words that would certainly put the nail in his coffin. He never said kill them. He never said murder them. He was very specific with his language. After you had the fight, where did you go? I stayed with his brother. While you were staying with him, was the defendant trying to contact you? Yes. He came in and knocked on the door. And I obviously didn't want to be near him, so I 
hid in a closet. Why did you hide in a closet? Because I was afraid of Leon. What happened while you were hiding in that closet? He came in and continued to yell and was looking for me. And he said, I know that you're, I know that that bitch is here. Putting her up on the stand, you could hear a pin drop in the courtroom. Everyone wanted to hear from her and they really got some good insight into how Leon Jacob behaved behind closed doors. Knowing all that we now know about Leon Jacob, we felt like the best strategy would be for a female to cross-examine him. He doesn't have uh, good feelings about women. He thinks that he's better than women. And so with a female cross-examining him, we had a feeling that it would get under his skin pretty quickly. Did you offer to help Officer Duran inject Megan with potassium chloride? I think I did. Did you? I, yes. And you know as a doctor that potassium chloride will kill someone. Yes. And so by helping him inject Megan with potassium chloride, it would result in her death. That would be the logical conclusion. It would be the conclusion. We the jury find the defendant, Leon Philip Jacob, guilty of solicitation of capital murder as charged in the indictment. Before the jury decides how many years Leon will spend in prison, Prosecutors call his ex-wife, Annie Morrison. Um, he told me that he wouldn't just come after me, that he would go after my parents and that he would torture them in front of me. Guilty of solicitation of capital murder becomes your duty to assess the punishment in the case. You having been found guilty of two cases of solicitation of capital murder, you shall serve a life sentence. While you sit in jail, I hope you think of me, the girl that you called poor and uneducated. Because it's because of me, you will be in prison for life.